This question, what is a patient, is basic and important and deserves a short summary. So let's just recap what is a patient. Patients are mosaics of parts that have very different ages. On the left you see the illustration showing when the uh, transposon inserted into the proto-immunoglobulin gene to make possible the vertebrate adaptive immune system. That happened about 500 million years ago. Some of the very oldest parts, like intermediate metabolism, are precise and efficient because they have been shaped by billions of selective events. They are also very hard to change. Some of the most recent responses have not yet had time to adapt to change conditions, and so they are maladaptive mismatches. Secondly, patients of different ethnicities have genes that have experienced different histories of exposure to disease and diet. And the illustration evokes a, a GWAS, a genome-wide association study, showing that in a particular part of Africa there is a particular region of the chromosome that provides resistance to tuberculosis. Because patients vary in their ability to resist disease and metabolize drugs, individualized medicine can probably produce more accurate treatment, but it doesn't come cheap. Another feature of patients is that they have a particular life history and the human life history is unusual. Humans have only recently evolved altricial young, childhood, short interbirth intervals, and menopause. They are not yet as precisely and elegantly designed as ancient traits because they have been shaped by many fewer selective events. And you can see that girls and boys have also evolved very different growth trajectories with girls maturing earlier than boys. The next important aspect of patients is that they're products of their developmental histories as well as their evolutionary histories. They react to diet, exercise, and disease with plastic responses. Here are the Avald brothers who are identical twins. This one undertook long distance running at 18 and at the same age his brother took up weightlifting. This makes the point that patients are points on reaction norms and reaction surfaces that integrate their individual developmental histories. It also emphasizes that events occurring very early in life, in utero, perinatally, and postnatally, have large impacts on the rest of life. Patients are also bundles of trade-offs, and because of that, most interventions have side effects because changes in one trait are linked to changes in other traits genetically, developmentally, and physiologically. And we evoke that idea with the Y model of trade-offs where a certain resource coming into the organism is being split here between two functions, between fecundity and survival. This means that it's almost impossible to change any one thing without changing something else. That might be significant or not significant depending on the circumstances, but all traits in an organism are tied together to some degree. Some side effects are important and we need to be aware of them. Patients also are organisms that age and they were not selected to age and to die. They age because they were selected for reproductive performance and reproduction has costs in repair, maintenance, defense, and mortality that were worth paying in evolutionary currency. Many patients and doctors, of course, do not see it that way. Another very interesting developing part of our vision of what is a patient is that early experience makes quite a difference. And we evoke that with this picture from the Dutch hunger winter. Nutrition in utero and in infancy affects the risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity decades later, as well as some other diseases. And if we also look into the microbiota, we can see that we need to be very careful about disrupting the microbiota. And that's because of our recognition that there is continual, there's initial crosstalk, and then there is continuing crosstalk between the immune system 
and the microbiota, both in the gut and in the skin epithelium and in the lung epithelium and elsewhere. The microbiota are affected by C-sections, by breastfeeding and antibiotic therapy, and that has consequences for asthmas, atopy, autoimmune diseases, and obesity. And I should also point out that if we have large antibiotic treatments that pretty much wipe out the intestinal microbiota, it opens up the possibility of a C. difficile infection, which can kill people. So here again, events that are happening very early in life, when the gut is initially colonized, have disproportionate impact on the rest of life.